jockeying for, well, November will be 25 years. Um, we've uh, done probably just a little over 2,000 receptions um, for weddings and so on and so forth. We'll average between, well, <coughs> some years it's uh, 100, some it's 140, and some it's 80. So it depends on uh, depends on a lot, depends on the economy, depends on uh, what people want to put into their weddings and so on and so forth. But we've been doing it for about 25 years, and my wife and I and my stepson, we live all the way out in New Braintree. If you don't know where that is, it's way on by the Quabbin Reservoir. So it was a little bit of a ride to get here this morning. I left about quarter past five, so um, we wanted to come to hang out with you folks and uh, talk to you a little bit about... Um, about our side of doing wedding receptions and doing uh, the wedding, wedding ceremony itself, which actually is what you folks are involved with. So, by show of hands, how many people use lapel or lavalier microphones already? Just maybe about half or so, huh? How many folks don't like to use them because they already think that they already have a big mouth? <laughs> so, just a couple. Well. Some folks do believe that they uh, can speak loud enough. Now, if I shut my microphone off, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. See, it is, it is quite the difference. But, you know, using a lav microphone or a lapel mic, however you want to call it, it, um, it can do a lot for you. It actually it gives you that uh, um, amplification so all, your guests, all the guests that belong you know, to, the, uh, to your clients can actually hear everything about what's going on. So they can hear your... Uh, you do the officiating, but it also gives the uh, bride and groom, who sometimes can be nervous or meek in that type of a situation because they've never done vows before, possibly have never done vows before, but allows them to be amplified as well. So if they're sitting in front of you and, um, you know, they're nervous or sometimes they tear up and, you know, you've seen it all. Most of you have probably performed plenty of weddings and um, they don't speak very loud. Well, sometimes just you hearing or wearing that microphone, it picks up enough of uh, what the bride and groom are saying and everybody else can hear what's going on. And a lot of the elderly people that are sitting in the audience at times um, may not be able to hear as well because the hearing isn't what it used to be. And I, for one, am not quite elderly yet, but I can't hear anything anymore. But um, it does allow everybody to hear what's going on. And if you've never tried it, just try it, just for the heck of it. It's, um, it's a great way to um, take that step into the future as far as um, millennials like this new technology. Let's, let's back up and we'll go that way. The millennials being anybody after this Y2K thing back in 2000, every, they all like this technology. Everything's in a smartphone now or it's in an iPad or it's, uh, it's all the latest technology as you know. <clears throat> um, has anybody never ever used a lab mic before. Everybody's always, oh, you've never used one? Um, lab mics are, uh, they can be sensitive, you know, they can be, uh, if you're, it, it depends on where your disc jockey or whoever you're using may be putting their, their speaker. I like to put them in the back of the audience, behind the audience, and for the simple fact that those people back there are not going to hear as well as the people that are in the front are going to hear. The people that are up in front, in front of the ceremony, of course, are going to hear everything pretty much vocally anyway from the officiant and also the bride and groom. But I like to put my speakers in the back because the people that are sitting way in the back can actually hear everything out there better. And it also, with the speakers back there, it takes away from the feedback, that squealing noise that you may get um, when you have a microphone too close to a speaker. Yes? I've used the mic often. The one problem that I have is the fact that very often we talk to our brides and grooms, and it's not something that you want amplified. I try covering it with my hand, doesn't seem to do the job. Is there anyone that can be controlled so that when we are doing a ceremony and we want to do uh, personal talking to the bride and groom, that we can shut off the light? Yeah, so the question was, um, Sometimes when he's up there performing his, uh, when they're doing their vows and so on and so forth, he has to make comments to the bride and groom, and it's not for those comments may not be for everybody to hear. Is that is that's that correct. pretty much your question? Correct. Okay. So in that case, um, some justice of peace like to keep. They will keep the body pack. We call this the body pack. They'll leave it if you're holding a notepad or a, a binder of some sort. I'm not sure what you folks call uh, that. I, I'm going to call it a binder. Um, 
you can leave this right in the binder, and if you have to make a comment to the to that future bride and groom, the bride and groom, you just hit the button, shut the button off, and then that takes away all the amplifications. Just it's just one button right here on the on on the body pack. And most body packs, I don't know of any that don't have that button. So if you need to make those uh, have that private discussion with that with that bride and groom, you can certainly do that by hitting that that button. It's uh, just a mute button. That's all that is. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, you bet. Um, and it's tough. Sometimes it's for the for the ladies out there, the lady just as the piece. Sometimes it's tough for you if you're if you're wearing a dress and you don't have a pocket to put a put a body pack, or there's no place on your robe if you happen to wear a robe. These also also clip on nice to that binder that I had mentioned. Um, they work great in the binder, so you can just leave it right there in the binder. And if you don't want to wear the microphone. You can clip this into the binder as well and hold this in your hand. And that binder essentially becomes closer to the bride and groom. So when they're doing their vows, it's going to pick them up even better. So that's also some thought. You can actually take the microphone and wrap it around the body pack. And then you got it all in a nice little fancy clump and it's sitting right there in the binder. And it'll pick up things pretty well. So just, uh, just a little tidbit, a little food for thought. Uh, when it comes to using these microphones. Now, um, if you don't know where to get them, your local guitar center, and just they, those things have popped up pretty much all over the place. However, um, my wife is here today. Uh, I've got to leave. i got an event to do up in Luster on the other side of Worcester here at, uh, at 11 o'clock. So, um, my wife is here. She's got business cards. We are a dealer. We can also get you these things. We sell them to you at our cost, what we pay for them as a dealer. Um, and we can get, essentially get them, get them to anybody. Now, lapel mics, yes, they can be expensive. However, they can be bit, uh, very cheap. So what I'm going to ask you not to do, if you want to be professional and if you'd like to um, sound as best you can, don't go to the local Radio Shack and buy a Radio Shack one because you're going to get what you pay for. It's true when they say you get what you pay for when it comes to technology. Um, us being a dealer, we um, we do spend a lot of money on equipment, and we do it for a reason. We want the longevity. We want um, we want our equipment to last, and we want to get the best out of it. We want to get essentially get the best sound that we can. So you can spend anywhere from for a decent lavalier microphone, you can spend anywhere from three hundred and fifty dollars to this one here. To, I kind of bought this one personally for Athetetro. This one's like thirteen hundred, so you can actually spend a lot of different, uh, all kinds of money. He's he's a friend of mine. He's he's a diva, and I like to take care of him. I'm harassing him. Yeah, I'm harassing him. Uh, we've, I've known him for probably forty, close to almost you know forty five years. So um, he does a heck of a ceremony. So I. When you do a nice ceremony, and I, we don't mind, as a company, we spend that extra money to have nice microphones. And we do. We have quite a few. <clears throat> and then sometimes the officiant may, may want to wear one, or they may choose not to wear one. But sometimes we'll put one on the bri I mean, on the groom as well, and you can hide it in this tuxedo somewhere. Um, so that way you don't see the body pack and you don't see all the cords. And luckily for us, we always have a small console that we put out there at the ceremony. And we can uh, always hit a mute button if there's something that has to be said and we know that the, these things are going to be said. We can hit the mute button and shut it off so the groom's not actually looking for that body pack and, um, you know, and things like that. So, anybody with questions so far? You're kidding. This is too easy. Yes, Mike? The uh, couple, do they pay extra for the DJ to provide the... Uh so that's a good question. So Mike is Mike has asked if if the if the couple will pay extra for a microphone. So um, yes, some DJs do charge extra for the microphone. Some DJs charge um, to put a PA system out there. Uh, I can tell you personally what we do as our company. If they are going to hire us to put a system out there to play processional and processional wedding marches and so on and so forth. We don't charge them for that microphone. The PA system's already out there. We do charge them a little bit extra, not a lot. We do charge them a little bit extra um, to put that PA system out there. Um, but I do know some guys do charge for the PA system, the guy that's going to run it, and for the microphone. 
when you put wedding in front of your in front of your event, people automatically think cha ching. We do all the weddings that we do every year because we try not to be too a, too a, too much of an expensive company. You know, so yes to answer your question. Yes, ma'am. I found on Cape Cod on beach weddings, a DJ has to provide a wireless system to the beach because there's no electricity. So they usually charge around 150. That's actually that's actually not a that's a pretty standard price. Reasonable. That's pretty standard price. So. Yeah, so, so what she said, she, made a, she just made a comment down on the beaches, if you're doing a ceremony on a beach, um, of course there's no electricity down there, so um, these guys may run a wireless system um, to, because they essentially don't have any place to plug that system in, so it's, um, in $150, it's actually pretty reasonable. You know, Mike, it is pretty reasonable. You had another question? Yeah, the, the wireless for the officiant is one thing, but what about the... Wireless handheld for the readers. And how do you handle that? All right, so I'm, I'm gonna, I was gonna, I'm gonna bring that up. Actually, um, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself because I've only got 15 minutes or so to to uh, interact with you folks. But he brought up the thing about a handheld microphone, and we'll do a little simulation here. So if I was, if I was a bride and groom, and I was having the photographer take pictures of my ceremony, what does this look like? Exactly right. It's not it's not a photogenic picture at that point, at least not a decent photogenic picture. You don't want a handheld microphone in your pictures. You don't want a mic stand in your pictures with all this going on and yeah. the officiants doing this off to the side. If you've got a, if they're using a DJ like that, obviously he, he's not a professional. Yes, I <laughs> well, lack of a better term, he's probably not a professional. But he's uh, somebody that's just doing something to get by for the day. Or if it's a friend of the bride and the groom, a friend of a friend that's going to do it. And, you know, oh, my friend's going to do it, my buddy's going to do it, somebody at work's going to do it. You get a lot of that. You know what I mean? Everybody who's got an iPod nowadays thinks they're a DJ. Or everybody who's got a digital camera nowadays thinks that they're a photographer. It's, um, they get what they pay for. But he was only $150. Well, you're going to get a $150 event. But I'm not trying to say that uh, we like to spend a ton of money on everything that we, you know, um, for a wedding, for example, people spend a lot of money on weddings as it is, but I don't want to be the one that they're going to complain about. So we try to be very reasonable. I don't want them to say my DJ was a lot of money. We do as many weddings as we do every year because we try to stay pretty reasonable and not be the one that they're going to complain. So that answer your question, Mike, about that microphone? Anybody else with a question? About the wind. So, um, Arthur brought up a point about um, Mother Nature. Mother Nature can play havoc when you're using these microphones. And this one here, the one that I'm wearing today, does have a wind sock on it. And that's what they call those. And we do have wind sock for the handheld ones. However, we don't try to use those very often. We do use them outside for large events. My wife and I, we do concert sound and we do all that crazy stuff as well. But um, wind socks, yes, they do help. However, they do not take the wind, that, that blowing noise out of the PA system. They do not. So what I recommend and what Arthur and I have actually done is we'll take these and we'll actually put them behind the robe or maybe behind uh, something that they, you may be wearing just to cut down on some of that wind resistance because when the wind passes through this, it's going to make that whistling, rumbling type of noise that you may get. So kind of put it behind your robe if you can or maybe a tie for you gentlemen that are wearing a tie or uh, ladies. Um, Maybe even behind a, a thick necklace like this gal here is wearing a... a, a no, this jingles. Oh, that jingles? All right. So no jingles. But something just to help block the wind. You want to you want to get that, take it out of line with the resistance from the wind. Um, i got to refer to my notes because I kind of got off track a little bit. Um, the, oh, oh, okay. Go ahead. If, you're, if you go to do a wedding, we don't pick the DJ. So we don't know the quality of the equipment. I mean, we could maybe recommend someone, but usually a lot of the couples I work with, the book, book their DJs in advance. And you don't know what equipment they have, and if they show up with a stand mic, I think that's tough. And how do you, um, do you have any tips for working with that if you need your hands? So this gal's uh, question was, she was asking for tips for 
um, when she shows up to, to be an officiant at a wedding, um, and the equipment that the entertainer is providing, I guess, is probably a little bit substandard that we may want to recommend for a wedding. Um, for example, they may only have that kind of handheld mic. Well, to be quite honest, ladies and gentlemen, you are kind of our first line of defense when it comes to meeting with the bride and groom. You essentially probably meet with them before we often do. They will call us, they'll book the event, and then sometime before the wedding, maybe three weeks or four weeks before, they will finally send us a list of their music and their wants and needs and so on and so forth for the wedding. However, JPs quite often meet with them or talk to them um, right off the bat. And if you, if you keep that mindset and ask, start asking the questions, um, are you going to have a PA system out there for the ceremony? And if you are having a PA system, what will they be providing me? Will they be providing me a lab mic? Or are they bringing a handheld mic? Excuse me, etc. So, and if they say, "Well, I hadn't thought about it," well, then you know maybe you want to encourage them to think about it. Maybe you want to encourage them to actually take that step and you know make something of their wedding a little more than what they were actually thinking about. What I mean by that is encourage them to maybe have uh, even if they got to rent a PA from a rental company like what we do, or maybe their DJ maybe needs to step up and buy something. Um, if he's going to do this job and be a little bit more professional, then maybe he needs to get into the uh, into 2016 and, and buy that type of equipment. But if not, you can certainly rent it. Um, I would encourage you, um, you know, when you talk to your brides and grooms, to see what they have and find out if they can actually provide this stuff for you. And if and if they can't, then then maybe you can sway them into uh, having that bride and groom rent them from somebody. Yes, ma'am. I have an ADPA system, and the microphone that came with it didn't seem very good. When I tested it in the house, my husband went down the other end of the hall and couldn't really hear. What's the best type of microphone to get for my, my system? Very good question. Because he bought me like three different ones. One of the microphones is so huge, I was like, yeah, I'm never going to wear this. They'll see it a mile away. But I, I want to make sure I'm using the right one for what I have. All right, very good question. Her question was, she's got a microphone, and sometimes it doesn't work well in the house. Sometimes it does, or sometimes it's bulky. It's big and bulky, and it's it's hard to disguise, and so on and so forth. So um, to answer the first part of that question about um, maybe it doesn't work well in the house, or microphones need line of sight. So they have these little antennas on them, and on top of that speaker over there, there's a receiver sitting on top of that, and it's got two antennas on it as well. They love and need line of sight. So yes, I could walk down there, or I could walk around the corner, and it's probably still going to pick me up. However, when you're talking about um, the frequencies that these microphones use, as soon as people stand up and they're blocking that line of sight, People's body will absorb all that frequency and all that um, all that directional frequencies that the microphone requires for it to work. So if you don't elevate your receiver like I have over there, and you're got your speaker set up in the back of a ceremony, and everybody stands up when the bride's coming down the aisle and the officiant has to make a comment, uh, whatever it may be, all those people are essentially blocking that line of sight. For that microphone. So that's why uh, DJs should know, if they know anything about their equipment, they should elevate those. So that way the body pack can talk to that receiver. So that's the first thing. Um, there are essentially two brands that that I know of that offer, this is actually a bigger one. This Is yours smaller than this or bigger? I have that one. I have one that's a little bit smaller. But the other one I have has as large a head as that one, but it's on a longer cord, a longer flexible cord. Is that a headset type microphone? No, it's a clip-on. It's a clip-on. Yeah. Okay, there are, there's two big names in this industry when it comes to lapel microphones, or lapel microphones. There's a lot of microphones out there, don't get me wrong. But there are two big names. One is Shure, S-H-U-R-E, and the other one is Sennhauser. It's a German-made microphone. Um, they're both pretty decent microphones. Um, that one that you had, what'd you say was ADP? I think it's a Natty. Oh, a Natty. Yeah. N A D Y. Okay. It's a it's a 
they've been around forever. Um, of course, I that's actually was my first one I ever bought was was a natty when I first went into business 150 years ago. Um, however, they are they are good. They don't like distance well. Okay. All right. So that's um, it's it's probably fine in maybe a room like this, but in a larger room it may not work as well. Okay. All right. So. It's it's not a bad microphone, but it's um, it's not great for all venues. We'll call it that. Okay. Okay. I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, the lady over there had a great question. Thank you. Um, I'd say in my the weddings that I do, um, I'd say three out of four that um, the microphone I find out when I get there from the DJ. Most of the time, it might be a lapel. But a couple of, a lot of the times, you have a great uh, answer on, and a lot of people will use that. So if I find out there's a reader or two, we put that right in the middle wherever they want the reader, and then I move that out of the way. So the pictures are the main thing that the people want. Yes. Uh, but I would, I'd love to be doing the weddings that you want to have to do, because I think you've got a, it's a great way to do it with the lapel. Uh, it's very easy. People can hear you. I think we're, many of us can be loud enough, but if I'm talking like this, not everybody can hear me. And they may hear you, but they may not hear the bride. <coughs> and then, you know who they want to hear? The bride and groom. Right? Exactly. They want to hear those I do. <laughs> yeah. Particularly if they're videotaping. <clears throat> yes. Videographers like to, uh, they like to, and a lot of the time the videographer will ask us for a feed and we give their camera a feed off our console. But um, what this gentleman was bringing up was um, the fact that you, you may not find out what you're getting for equipment until you actually get there. And that's why sometimes it may not hurt to have your own microphone. And there have been plenty of JPs out, out my way, because you know, we're out the Worcester County way, and I have seen ladies and gentlemen show up with their own microphones, and, and I just politely say, well, you kind of won't need that one today, because we got one for you already. And they're delighted. They don't, have to take their, they don't have to take their microphone out and unravel cords and all that stuff. So, um, but quite often enough, there are some that do carry them carry them along and it kind of assures that they're not going to have to worry about talking into something like this. So, yes ma'am? Yes, one of my sound uh, engineers gave me a phone app and you have a small sound uh, receiver or transmitter, it was maybe three by, just a small box that was up in the front with the phone application on and it had perfect sound that was recorded. You know anything about yeah, so that's kind of the that's kind of a neat thing. It's all done through a Bluetooth system. So what she's talking about, she said uh, a sound technician that she's worked with has uh, given her an app for the phone, and uh, it actually works on a Bluetooth type system, and it actually goes through uh, the Bluetooth system into his PA, and it works off of her phone. You know, that's perfect. However, Bluetooth systems. Um, use phone systems, use phone lines. Some of the phone rings. And if the phone, exactly, if the phone rings or um, something happens with the phone, maybe your battery's not up to snuff or maybe for whatever reason you get a, a text message or um, there's a delay in the signal. Yes, it's great technology, but it's not perfect technology. And it, you know, it's, um, it's very ingenious of him to even think about that, but it gets him out of having to buy a microphone, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, and it's, that's, that's actually a millennial, millennial thing that I had mentioned earlier. The millennials have all these great creations, and they want to do everything through their phone. The, the fo these smartphones are phenomenal, but they are not end-all and save-all by any means. So, any other questions? Just, I, if I can just interject. My way of thinking is, why should a JP buy a sound system, number one? Why spend the extra money? Number two, if you do buy the sound system, you're responsible for it if something goes wrong. That can wreck the wedding. Just like we don't like one-day licenses to come in and do our job, we shouldn't be doing a DJ. job. He's right. He's right. You know, um, and that's the difference between a professional DJ and somebody who does that fly-by-night thing, or they may do one a year or two a year or something like that, and it's the same thing. And the same with these uh, these DJs that DJ off an iPad or or what, an iPod, and uh, the photographer thing that I mentioned. You know, they they're just trying to get through the day and be cool and however you want to call it. I don't know, but. <clears throat>
Um, it doesn't hurt to have a microphone though, I've got to admit. But um, we're not asking you to purchase, we're just giving you an avenue to help you if you find, if you're in an area, you're a certain part of the state, and um, there's not some of that newer technology out that way. I know out where I live. Um, <laughs> Out in the yeah, we're in the boonies and two cups and a string. That's most of the uh, systems out our way. However, being a dealer, we we uh, we have some of the best technology out there. I won't uh, I won't keep you any longer. I it's, thank you for letting us come down down to Plymouth here and speak to y'all today. And if anybody's got a last question, I'll get out of your hair. And she's got one down there. Oh yes, ma'am. What are your most favorite things that an official can do, and what are your least favorite things that an official can do? Mm, good question. Okay, Campbell. That's uh, <laughs> So this latest question was why one of my most favorite things that a fishing can do and one of the most favorite things that they cannot do. Honestly, I, 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 I give you a couple. So the most favorite thing that I can, I can honestly say is um, being on time. Being on time is very important to me. Um, I like to get to a wedding two hours before. It sounds crazy. But when I get to a wedding, I walk around that room and I make sure that there's, there's champagnes in the glasses or, or everything is where it's supposed to be or the cake is there. I'm a nut. You know what I mean? I don't know why I do it. It's just something that I do and it's probably because we've been doing it for so long and we've done so many, it just becomes second nature to us. Sometimes brides and grooms will even call us and say, hey, is this, the, the, the florist did this, is that right? And I'm not a florist. <laughs> But I can honestly tell you, you know, sometimes the difference between right and wrong with some of the vendors that are providing these brides and grooms. So, um, I guess the most important thing, I mean, showing up, I mean, we all want to be there on time. But the most important thing is, when you, before you come up, or before you actually provide the ceremony itself, take a minute, and when we strap this microphone on, take the minute, walk up there, do a little bit of a sound check, and that sound check may be... Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Introduce yourself, and that's it. If you don't mind, we are about to get underway. Before you know, we'll be performing this ceremony for you today. But if you don't mind, turn your cell phones off. Shut your cell phone off. I mean, it's people can go without their cell phones for the next 20 minutes or half hour, however long this ceremony is. But that is important. Believe it or not, it's important. And the last thing that you want is that distraction of that phone ringing at somebody's ceremony. So that's my answer to your question. Um, that was the least, oh, the least favorite thing. Um, I'm not sure if I have a real good least favorite thing that I've seen JPs do. Every most of the justice piece that I've worked with, they're all, they've all do something a little bit different. Um, I guess the the lack of projection in some. JP's voices. So if, if you notice the way that I'm talking, I like to project. I like to uh, I like to be enunciate as clear as I can, even though uh, I'm an entertainer. So I guess I don't probably enunciate as clear as I should. But I like to project. I like to be heard. And I, I guess the only thing that I can say is sometimes uh, officiants don't project like I would hope they would, and it makes it tough for us when we're at our little console and we're trying to adjust your voice and um, it's not all there. You're maybe speaking in a meek kind of a term, I guess, if a lot, maybe a lack of a better term. So, yes, ma'am. No, one more question. We can take one more question. Oh, we can take one more question. Okay, go ahead. My question is: Any tips on cueing a DJ for music during, before, and after? All right. Her question is: Any tips on cueing a DJ before, during, or after? Um, what I like to do more often than not is I like to meet with the officiant um, minutes before, maybe a half hour before. It depends on what time they get there and what kind of time that they have. And I like to briefly go over the ceremony. How long is the ceremony going to last? Um, when would you like me to switch the music over for whatever reason if the, if the officiant's in charge of me playing a... Um, processional march for the bridesmaids and then a processional march for uh, the bride and dad or whatever it may be. So I like to go over all that stuff. And then I also like to ask, what is the last thing that you're going to say before I play 
the recessional wedding march. Are you going to introduce them as Mr. and Mrs., or are you going to just say, uh, or are you just going to um, ask them to do their first kiss? Whatever the last thing is that you're going to say, are you going to have them turn around and face the audience? And does that when I start the music? Those are some of the things that I like to go over. And this, the JPs that I work with most of the time, that all becomes second nature to us. We all know what we're going to ask each other most of the time. Um, as far as the whole, the whole ceremony, without actually going through the whole ceremony verbatim, we kind of pretty much cover all the bases. It's basically a time frame. The last things they're going to say and the first things they're going to say. Because I'll actually have, if a JP is wearing one of my microphones, I'll actually have it muted until um, to the point where I know that they're going to ask for them, for people to rise uh, to stand up because the brides actually get to that point where they need to rise. And then if it's a long walk from where the people actually rise, I might mute it again until she actually gets down to where the ceremony is going to be performed, and then I'll turn it back on again. And if it's only because if it's outdoors and there's a breeze, you may be getting a little bit of wind, or you may have a baby crying or something like that. And that's all the stuff that I try to keep out of the ceremony as best I can. So, any more questions? Well, thanks, folks. So, once again, my name is Rich Lapierre. I'm uh, from Sounds by Rich Entertainment all the way up in New Braintree, Massachusetts. If you got anything you may need, my wife has got cards. I'm going to run off to another event, like I said, up on the other side of Worcester. But she'll be here all day. She's actually going to get commissioned today. Today, uh, she is going to become a Justice of the Peace. Yay! So, she, she, uh, honey, stand up. This is my wife, Kristen, right here. So, she'll be here all day. Once again, folks, thank you. Thank you.